Welcome again, everyone. This is Jessica Frank. I'm A to J Authors Project Manager, and this is A to J Authors new user webinar for June. Thank you all for attending. Some tips for authoring that have come up in the last month or so. Just one that makes it easier for our communication um, when you come to me and report that there are bugs or problems with your A to J guided interview. Um, to save both of us time, if you would please send in a screenshot of your interview and the developer console if that's possible. If you're not sure how to open the developer console, it's usually under the little hamburger menu at the end of the URL bar. Um, there's keyboard shortcuts and it depends on what browser you're, you're using, but generally the developer console will have additional error messages in it if something is going wrong with the code of A to J author. So if you have a bug report, any screenshots you have, um, any as specific as possible on what browser you're using, what operating system, um, things you did to trigger it to try to repeat so that I can repeat the bug and verify it for our developers would be helpful. And it's also helpful for you to just send me the zip file of your interview right away. Generally, um, I need that for um, to look at and to, to debug your issues. So that's just a tip that's come up with um, some bug reports in the past, saves both of us time, and we can get to what the root issue is and solve that for y'all quickly. So on our agenda today, we're going to talk about repeat loops. We'll talk about what they are, two ways to create them within A to J author, and how variables work in a repeat loop. So first, let's talk about what a repeat loop is. A repeat loop, which is also known as a repeat dialog, is a series of questions that will display to the end user multiple times based on the user's input. You use a repeat loop if you need to collect the same type of information several times and you don't know how many times the end user will need to go through it. So let the end user and the software figure out how many times they need to go through it rather than you trying to create a series of questions over and over to anticipate all of the possible um, options that they may need to, to go through. There are two ways to make repeat loops in A to J author and both have the same outcome. You can either collect the number of times the end user has to go through the loop first, let them tell you up front how many times they want to go through the loop or need to go through the loop. Or you can ask them if there are any more or if they need to go through the loop again at the end of the loop. So do you have any more of whatever? Um, and let them say at the end of the series of questions whether they want to enter the loop again or not. We'll talk about the collecting the number first first. So you use this way when the end user is going to know right away how many times to go through the loop and you just ask them for the number. Most commonly and in the example that I have here um, and an exercise I have for you later, um, it's generally used with children. So an end user knows um, how many children they have. It's a finite uh, loop. You can set the parameters of how many you're going to collect. So in the sample, it's one through nine. Um, you as the author create the scope of your interview. So if you want to allow someone to input information about their 14 children, then that's fine, or, or as many children as they need. But so you uh, ask the number up front from the end user and you store it in a number variable. In this example, it's number of children and you. The next or the first step is to create the series of questions that you want to repeat. So you know that you need to ask about the child's name and the child's birth date in this uh, sample exercise here that we're going through. Um, so I would create those first two questions. Well, it's actually three questions. You create the how many question, how many children do you have? And then the two questions that I know that will have to be repeated, asking about the birth date and ask, asking for their name and then asking for their birth date. The second step is to create the counting variable. The counting variable is the number variable that keeps track of how many times the end user has gone through the repeat loop. It should always be a number on the variables tab and it should not be set to repeating. So um, if you've worked in A to J author before, you know that when you create a variable, there's a little checkbox that says check if uh, repeating or check to hold multiple values. You do not want that checked for child count. And we'll talk about variables uh, at the end of the slide deck as well. The third step is that how many question. So you create the, you have created already the how many children do you have question. It is the first question of the repeat dialogue, but it won't be repeated to the end user. They only need to answer that one time. So on this how many question in step four, you scroll down to the button section, 
That's what the bottom screenshot is showing. The destination is the first question of the loop, so child's name. The repeating options are set counting variable to one, and then you tell A to J author what counting variable to use. So here we have set counting variable to one that initializes the count, tells A to J author that, you, that the end user is starting into the loop and to start tracking that they're in a loop. And you tell A to J what, what loop it's in, which is child count. And remember, that's a number variable, and it looks a little bit different if you're used to authoring um, in A to J author hot docs following the community naming conventions, because I want to see, looking right at that, that this is a counting variable. So it has child and count are all one word, both child and count are capitalized, and there's no two-digit um, letter after the, letters after the end telling what type it is. So this distinguishes it from other normal variables in an interview. On the questions that are to be repeated, so child's name and child's birth date, the way that you tell A to J author that they're part of a loop is to put the counting variable in the text section. So what this screenshot is showing you is in the question text section, under the question text, under the learn more, under the learn more prompt uh, and the help, there is a field called counting variable right before you get to the field section. This this counting variable field is where you enter again the counting variable to tell A to J that this is part of a loop. It basically tags that question as part of the loop. You don't tag it in the counting variable section of the question text in the how many question because that one isn't to be repeated to the end user. You can see in the map or in the question list itself on the pages tab, whether or not a question is tagged properly to be part of the loop, whether that counting variable field in the question text section is uh, or has a counting variable in it, because it shows the circle and the word loop next to it in the map, and it has the same icon on the pages tab showing that it is uh, part of a repeat loop. So you can see that how many children does not have it in the yellow column, but child's name and child's birth date both have that loop symbol. The sixth step is on the last question to be repeated. So in this example, children's name was the first question to be repeated and child's birth date is the second question. On this child's birth date question, on the very, uh, at the very bottom at the, in the buttons tab, I tell A to J author to increment the counting variable and to set the counting variable, or that this counting variable is child count. So I'm telling A to J that they have finished the loop and to basically make that tally mark that they've gone through the loop once, they've gone through it twice, three times, et cetera. This will um, increase the, the counting number by one every time the end user hits this button. On the final, that final page as well, if you scrolled further down to the logic section in the advanced uh, logic into the after section, you're going to have to write a little logic script to test whether the end user has gone through the interview the same number of times as they said they needed to go through the interview. So they said they needed to go through it, uh, and that's held in number of children and you, and you test that against how many times they have gone through it, which is held by the number child count. So if child count equals number of children and you, go on to the next step, which is the, in this case, is the do you have any step. Otherwise, else, go to child's name, which is the first of the repeating questions in this loop. And it'll keep testing that every time the end user hits that three dash child's birthday question until the, the initial uh, condition of child count equaling number of children and you is satisfied. To asking to add more at the end. So if an end user is not likely to know how many times they need to go through the loop, you ask them at the end of the loop, end of the loop if they want to add another. So for example, the assets over $100 is something that an end user might not know off the top of their head how many assets over $100 they have. So let them start making a list and telling you one at a time, and then you can verify that they need to add more at the end. So this one has the same beginning steps as the other way. You create that set of questions that needs to be repeated. In this case, the two questions that are in my loop um, are the asset name and value is a one question, and then the do you want any more is at the end. 
Um, so that's the series that I have to be repeated. I created a counting variable. Again, you can see the different um, naming structure and then it's asset and count, all one word. Both the A and the C are capitalized. It is a number and it is not set to be repeated or to hold multiple values. It should only ever hold the one, whatever the loop value is. Step three is to create the lead off question. So this is the question that verifies that the end user actually has to go into the loop at all. It usually has two buttons, so do you have any? So before they go into a loop about assets over $100, let's make sure they actually have assets over $100. So do you have any, yes or no? On the yes button, you're going to set the counting variable to one. Again, you're initializing the count and you are initializing asset count here. So you put the counting variable uh, in that question as well, in the bottom in the button section. On all the questions to be repeated, make sure to tag each one as part of the repeat loop. So rem remember my loop here has asset name and value as one question, and then do you have any more as another question. So both of those are tagged with asset counts in the question text section. Um, and I did not tag it on, do you have any? Because that they should only be asked one time if they wanna start the loop. Again, each one of the ones with uh, that are tagged appropriately as part of the repeat loop have the loop symbol and the word loop on the map and the pages tab. So do you have any, does not, asset name, and any more, both are part of the loop in the purple column. The fifth question, the fifth step, is on the last question to be repeated, you create that, do you have any more, or do you have another uh, asset over $100 to add? So this is asking if they want to go back into the loop. If they do, the yes button should increment the counting variable. So telling the A to J that you've been, that the user has been through the loop and um, they're ready to go into it again. So increment the counting variable and tell A to J that it's part of asset count and go back to that, that um, first question of the loop. So in this case, asset name. And uh, on the no button on this last step, our uh, last question here, so the any more, do you have another? Um, the no button, they don't wanna go through the loop again, they're done, has normal repeat options, just like any other question in an interview, because you don't need to increment, you don't need to worry about the repeat loop anymore, they've left it. So you can, um, you can see that they've gone through the loop the appropriate number of times. So let's talk about variables in a repeat dialog. Variables, the actual ones that are used to gather information from the end user, so in this case, child name first TE, are treated like any other uh, variable in an interview. So you create the question, um, the text is the same, the field is the same, you can do learn mores, you can do pop-ups, you can use any variable type you'd like in a repeat dialog. It looks the same when you're creating the interview, the only difference is when you create the variable itself or go back and edit it later, make sure that this option to check if multiple values is checked. This tells A to J that this variable, instead of every time the user goes through the loop, it, over, it would overwrite the last answer. So child two's name would overwrite child one's if this box wasn't checked. When it is checked, a to J creates an index and starts allowing for multiple values to be held by the same variable. So you always wanna make sure that that box is checked, particularly if you're running through an interview and it looks like the answer for the first loop is showing up in the second loop, check to make sure that this box is checked. So I mentioned that it starts indexing. If you have that box checked, that it starts allowing for multiple values. So you can see in the screenshot of um, the uh, debug panel, the script panel, that the answers at the top are now child's name last TE1, child name last TE2, child name middle TE1, child name middle TE2, that it's holding different, value, different values and multiple values for each one of the options that um, I, the end user has given. You can use that information in variable macros, which we'll talk about in just a second, the fact that it does index to call out specific iterations of the loop. And the only difference um, in the question part is that you want to make sure you identify that the question is part of that repeat loop 
by including the counting variable on that question. So that's the only thing that makes the question itself in a repeat loop different from other questions that are not in a repeat loop. So using variables in a repeat loop, you can uh, both call out all the values and only call out and or only call out one of the values that you would like to see. Um, so we'll show you first how to call them all out. If you want to show all the values that have been gathered for that one variable within a repeat loop, um, you can use the macro, the double percent sign bracket name in the variable, close bracket double percent sign, and it will pull out everything, A to J will display everything it knows about that variable. So here, do you have another asset over $100 to add? You can have a learn more that says, what assets have I told you about already? And using the macro that's in the screenshot, it will display, you've told me about your house and car, you've told me about your house, car, and jet ski, you've told me about your house, car, jet ski, and boat. Um, it, A to J will automatically put in the commas and the word and, separating out the different um, indexed values. So you don't have to worry about the grammar on that or adding in the word and, it'll display all the values properly. You can also call out just one iteration of the loop. So in the child's uh, loop where I ask for the name and then I ask for the birth date, I can use the fact that they've told me the name to add, to add that into the question about the birth date. So I say, what is Allison's date of birth rather than saying, what is the second child or what is this child's date of birth? This reminds the end user who they're speaking of, particularly if there's a series of questions. In these sample exercises and these demos, it's only one or two questions in a loop. But in a real loop, like a, a divorce petition or a settlement, whatever, you might have multiple questions, dozens of questions about each individual child. So it can get confusing to the end user, you know, if they come back or they walk away for a second or they've just been asked 10 other questions to remember what child they're talking about. So use the information they've already given you. They've given you the person's name. You might as well use it. And so you can do that by doing double percent sign bracket, name of the variable, pound, counting variable, close brackets, close or double, per, uh, per, double percent signs, and it will display just the value that is on that loop. So it's looking for child's name first, TE, pound, they're on the first loop, pound one, pound two, pound three. So A to J will know what loop uh, they're on and will display the appropriate value that they've given you already. So now that I've told you how to do it, you can take the skills that you've learned in the last 19 minutes and practice those with a sample exercise that I created for you. We have a series of now 12 sample exercises on our website under the learn tab, adjauthor.org slash learn. Um, and it will display um, the 12 sample exercises. Each one has um, instructions and screenshots. It's several pages equivalent. Um, on the website that lets you walk through the sample exercises and learn how to do repeat loops. So the one I created for you today has uh, both repeat loops, the ones I've been showing today in the uh, children and assets. So you practice both ways of asking for the number up front and then asking to add more at the end. And it also has a very simple A to J DAT text template that shows you how to um, insert repeat loops into the DAT in both ways and display them both in a column with the child's name and the child's birth date in two separate columns and also a list of assets. So um, if you are interested in checking that out, highly recommend the sample exercises. Again, under the learn tab, sample exercises, there's a list of the 12. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or the comment box now or raise your hand and I will unmute you. Otherwise, you can always feel free to email me, jessica at cali.org. And our next webinar is July 11th at 11 a.m. Central. It is uh, both this month and last month were, are, were and are um, not on the normal day. For um, we were, I was at the Cali conference last week, and we have the 4th of July week um, in the first week of July. So we change up the schedule a little bit there. July 11th, 11 a.m. Thank you all for attending. If there are no questions, have um, a great uh, rest of the day and on to the weekend. So, thank you.